So how's everybody doing tonight? Okay, good. Um, these good people have come and, and asked me to come say some words to you about my early productions and stuff. So I was sitting there debating, right? I got remixes, original works, right? So I figure, why don't I ask you guys, you want to hear original or remixes? Wow, a resounding original. Okay, okay, okay. Well then, with that said, um, I'm gonna go into to the most recent thing that I've done, right? It's a track called STFU, and you can uh, think about what that what is means. That? What does that mean? <laughs> STFU. Um, it, it's, it's an acronym for uh, requesting silence. <laughs> so uh, this is STFU. And uh, this is, all right, I'll, I'll say something real quick. I'll just go all the way back. It all started with my friend's equipment, right? He had, uh, he had and if anyone knows about this, um, an SK-1, a Casio SK-1 sampler. Anybody remember those? Yeah, Casio SK-1. SK my first track was called uh, Do That Shit. And it was a, it was a sample track. And then um, a friend of mine had a Yamaha keyboard. I forget what kind, it was real small. And um, at the time, we didn't have any MIDI capability. We didn't have any um, computers or money or any of that. So what we did was we uh, recorded the, uh, the first sample part. Um, and oh, he, he actually had a, he had a, um, a, uh, a Roland 626 drum machine. Um, so what we did was we recorded the, the drum machine down to cassette. Then we took that cassette, since he had, we had a mixer and another deck, we ran that into a line on the DJ mixer and pressed record on the, on the other tape deck, and then I put the due date shit over the beat. Then with that last recording, we took that original deck and overdubbed that again and put the key line down. So by the time we finished, it was a hissy mess, but it was, it was music. And <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's, that's a feeling. That was the first track I ever did, and this is the last thing I've completed, and I'll tell you guys how that was made. All right. So like that first part, it was just so to say thank you. It's uh, it was an experiment. I was I was fooling with uh with layering and MIDI. And um, at first, most of the times when when I would approach MIDI, I always had my friends hooking up, and it would be simple. You take the MIDI cord, you plug it to another device, and you turn it on and see if it makes sound. You, we didn't have manuals to a lot of that stuff, so you just kind of fool with it until it until it produced something. Yeah. And so. Uh, that, that level of experimentation was big. And uh, what does your setup look like nowadays? Now it's a lot different. Now yeah. it's two of these, two MPC 2000 XLs, um, VS2480, uh, Korg M3, Korg Poly 800, um, Juno 106, uh, lots of Rose, get a Rose, a Wurlitzer, uh, and MS20. And Cool Man, word, yeah. it just goes on. It's like, I, I love keyboards, keyboard sure. nutcase. So like, I try to find as many different keyboards in different eras. But um, with this, that track is called uh, STFU, like I said, and it basically was an experiment. I was fooling around trying to get the one Akai to talk to the other Akai. <laughs> and for some reason, I still had it set up from my old setup where one, one Akai was controlling all the keyboards. And so I put the first Akai plugged into the second Akai, and all I did was press play, and all this stuff started happening. I was like, okay, that's strange. Maybe I can pull some stuff out, and it starts sounding okay. So I started eliminating 
couple of the sounds out of it started sounding okay, and that was uh, that's how it started. But I, I figured, yeah, I could make some rumble, what weird, crazy stuff. But then I figured, well, let's try to do something with it. Sure. So the rest of the track starts to get a little bit more melodic and shit like that. So. It starts going into, I started to develop the melody line along the, the beginning of such a, a wild eye part. Because one of the things I dig about, here's, here's, here's what it is. I get tired of the titles of what we call music and what we are limited in calling. Yeah, we're human beings, and yes, the marketing before us has called this type of music this, this type of music that, this type of music this. I get so bored with the designations, a lot of times I'll go into the beginning of a song with the clear idea of undoing what that designation is at the point. At the beginning of a track, um, it all comes down to rhythm, so as, far, as far as it is. Tempo is an irrelevant, is an irrelevant thing. Um, it's really about that, that whatever mood you're in and let that decide your tempo, not necessarily I'm gonna put it at 120 and make a house track, or I'm gonna put it at 130 and make a techno track, and put it at 196 and make a hip hop track. No, it's where you are. What's, what, is, what tempo are you feeling at that moment? Then set that, then once I set that, then I may come up with a palette, like I'll bounce through a record. Yeah, I can demonstrate a bit of that. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not about to make a track, man, I ain't got time. Y'all crazy. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. <laughs> no, but, but look. Go like this, and bounce through. Find something. That's not the one. That's how you think. Like I might like to snap on that snare right there. That pop. I'll still snatch it with all that stuff around it, just like that. But I'll you cut it and you chop, 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 chop. Now a lot of people don't do drums like that, and especially when you're talking about house or techno music. You're not supposed to lift and snatch drums from other places because that's hip hop production. That's all bullshit. You make it any way you want to make it. Um, so I like to snatch stuff that might be in the middle of a record because I like the feel on that snare. So I'll chop everything that's in that sample right there and then use the filters after I've got it to kind of form it into more of what I want and maybe hide the other music that I've snatched along with it. So if you were to say slapping the snare first, would you say program the snare first as opposed to say the kick? It's irrelevant. It's, you can put, you know, you can fire that in, put that in first. It doesn't, it doesn't matter which, whatever you're feeling at that moment. Okay. But what I, what I do, what I do tend to, to gravitate toward myself is rhythm. But if I feel like the song itself isn't calling for that, my mood at that point, because yeah. we're even talking about a song at that point, we just okay. I feel like I'm feeling creative. When you're feeling creative. Sometimes a bass line will set it off. Sometimes a melody line will set it off. Sometimes a melody I hear in a theme song of a cartoon, a spark. I mean, I go to the keyboard, try to mimic it, and then they'll come up with, ooh, that sounds interesting. You know, and it'll, it'll, the beat will be after the fact. But more, more times, more likely than not, it's usually either the, the drums or the bass line that starts a song for me. Um, I spend a lot of time just playing, playing just plain. If that means uh, the drums, it's the drums. But it's usually not the drums because my kid isn't set up, hasn't been set up for years. Mm -hmm. But it's keys right now. Um, just I'll play the keys, just play the keys, play the keys, play the keys until I feel something and record all of that down mm -hmm. while I'm fooling around. Like just fooling with sounds, fiddling, fiddling, fiddling. fiddling. And then um, I go back over the recordings and if there's something interesting there, I might build a song around, I might grab, grab that, chop it, cut it, put it back in, play over it again, and if I feel something with it, maybe add the second part. I mean, sometimes you find that these little ideas you're just messing around with are a lot better than the conceived ideas of what you're going, I'm going to make a song. And you get there like, oh my God, it sounds like shit. I should have just went when I was playing around, because cause you, when you're, we forget that the, the most creative people on the planet are little babies when they're playing around, you know. And when you get back to that state of play, when you're just 
fooling. That's when the that's when the friendly, that's when the best parts come out. But when you when you're too caught up in the I'm making a song, that's your ego talking. That has very little to do with, with fun. The creative question is, am I an artist? Am I a musician? Am I an engineer? Am I a scientist? Or am, or am I something other, or am I a businessman trying to make money? And it's, you have to apply all those different things to it if you're gonna be an independent artist. But even more so in the creative process, it's like, if you're into the engineering aspect of it, then be true to that, know that that's what you're into. If you're into the musician part of it, be true to that, know that, 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 that you're into that. If you're into the art part of it, make sure you're true to that, stay true to that. Because your ethic, that's gonna determine how, what you're gonna use, how you're gonna use it, and what you should be practicing on, and what your weak points are gonna be. Because an artist is not necessarily going to be the best engineer. You know what I mean? That's why you hear in Omar S's records, he has an engineering ear, but he's learning the other parts, the creative parts as it goes along. Just like with me, a lot of people complain, my records have sounded like shit, it's great ideas in the ones of the year. That's because my engineering, I've, I've never been much of an engineer. So like those kind of ideas is finding where you are and find your strengths and know what they are, but also know your weaknesses and, and know that you can improve on those, but it takes practice and no one wants to hear this shit and this comes down to the people that just want to make it, make some music and be somebody. They don't want ever want to hear that you have to work every day at this shit. That is very difficult to balance life as you know it outside of this and do this as well. And that's, that's where that, that obsession comes in. You have to be obsessed about it, driven. So um, in, in your setup, the, mm -hmm. the mix down part of it, do you have a, do you have a mixer that you work yes, with? Yes, indeed, yeah? uh, VS2480. Okay, is that the Roland hard... This yeah, the hard disc yeah. recorder. But okay. prior to that, I used a Sound Craftsman. Um, it was like a 16-channel mixer. It got it for a good price. And, um, and I would just do like old school. I wouldn't have any way to go back to the mixes. I would do each mix in a take. Mm -hmm. So I'd be, I rolled it that, start the track. All those different sounds are separated across the different levels on the, uh, on the mixer. And I just manually bring those things in and out as, as the track went on. So it's a lot of more fluid mix. Yeah. Um, but a lot of times you get so caught up in that that you miss that. You brought things in a little hard the last time because you got to put tape on it, make sure you don't go see the levels. Yeah. So yeah, this is a fun thing. This is fun. Okay, the second to last thing I did before this one, um, this is just also how, how life can inform you. I got a son, four-year-old, Evan. Um, we're watching kung fu movies, right? I'm babysitting my kid, we're hanging out watching kung fu movies. And there's this kung fu movie that comes on, and, he, and this guy goes, do you know any other styles? And, and, and then my son, he's running around the house the rest of the day saying, do you know any other styles to me? So it goes on for like two days. So next day I see him, he's, do you have any other styles? He's like, no, I don't have any other styles. And he kept on, kept on. And then I thought about it, I was like, you know what? That's interesting. So I went back to the movie, put it on, looked at it, found a part where he said any other styles and sampled it. And then I realized that all the little hits and pops and stuff, they sounded like claps and foots and hi-hats and shakers to me. So I started chopping up different parts of these hits on the Kung Fu thing and made them into a little track. And so that's what I'm gonna play for you guys. This is uh, any other styles. <laughs> and, it, and it's kind of nice to put on when you're just a DJ playing before you and you think he's boring. You put this on and, and they go, oh, he trying to diss me. <laughs> you know, all right, is this going to work? Or did I mess it up? I hope I didn't mess this one up. Yeah, cool. Okay, this is any other styles. Let me get this straight. Now that one has to come up there. Let me start off over here. Do you know any other styles? Do you know any other styles? <laughs> yeah, that was a lot of fun. Always let life inform you, man. If something drives you to make it, just stop what you're doing. 
if you, even if you're at your job, just leave your job. <laughs> go, go, go to the bathroom and, and get that melody down or, or, or do anything you can. Like if, you, if you're into music making stuff, always have a little record if you got to work a day job or do school or something so that you can excuse yourself to the bathroom and get that melody down because life informs you. You know, you're not always at a place where we can do our thing. So. So where is that at the moment? Is that just a, something you're working on at the moment? Or? This is some. Uh, that's just just a, 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 a little fun thing I did. I'm finished with it, so I'm gonna put it out soon. So okay. Gonna, <laughs> uh, you know, is, it, is it mixed down? It's that's as mixed as gonna get. That's, <laughs> that's one it's one. raw dog, and that was and that was another thing. Sometimes you get caught in your own little. You can get afraid, you know, like oh, I got to mix it 360 times and have an engineer come in and get the best mastering and all that. And if it's not a great song idea, what's the fuck? What's, it doesn't matter. You know, but sometimes the ability to be able to put music out if you're doing a label or something like that, you got friends that, does, that do labels, is to be able to get across a direct expression. Now, you're going to be you're gonna be called to task on that direct expression because I'm sure I'll put this out. Like, it sounds really messy. It's messy sounding. It's exactly what it's supposed to be. Yeah. Messy sound. That's what it was. That's what it is. So, yeah. you know, you leave it as that. Okay. Going to open it up, I think. Yeah? yeah. Anyone got any questions for Anyone. Mr. Parrish? You were just saying that you have done stuff with Cubase and computer-based stuff. Yes. How, how uh, why in that term? <laughs> well, mostly because I had a remix due and I was out of town, you know. Okay. That's largely that. But uh, also, too, I also, here's another thing, convenience as well was one, was, that's the main idea again, was like, because it was not convenient for me to be, have go home and bring my MPC on tour with me to go DJ when I had a remix do some. Basically, I would have preferred to go home and do it, but I took it as a challenge. Okay. I'm always trying to stretch myself out because I figured if I could go into a studio with these people and, and come up and say to this guy, this engineer, and say, okay, I need it to be like this, I need you to go like this, and you do this, and you do that, and then play my little pieces in it that he's going to use and fit it together and do that, I know that that's how a lot of people do it. So I figured, okay, while I'm sitting here in my high horse in my studio and my NPC and all this shit, talking all this shit about people, let me see what it's like to do it myself. And so what I learned was there's limitations in the insane amount of lack of limitation that, limitations that you have. Basically, it's this. You can come up with anything you want in this, this new way of doing stuff with the, with the programs. It's fucking amazing. But I'm shocked at how absolutely boring the amount of music that comes out from people that use this shit. I'm like, wait a minute. You can could, you could do anything with this shit. And oh, you mean all you're going to come up with is... No, no. No, you lazy bastards. Let's come up with something interesting. So... What I, what I, what I, the, that's the limitation is that you have so much stuff that you could do, you have to find out what you're going to do. And that's where good songwriting comes into it. Are you, gonna, are you putting down an original idea? You know, uh, the other part about it is that the mixing part is totally evaporated. I, that part I don't like about it. I hated that part about it is that you have to export everything to be able to touch it manually when, for me, you touched it manually before you came to the end product. So that, that whole switch is something I, I couldn't even get my head around. So that was a one-time? Not one-time. I mean, there was a two-time. Because I got, okay. there was two, two three remix, remixes I so had to you do. You prefer the one? I prefer, I prefer. <laughs> yeah, I prefer. <I've>, <laughs> you know, but, but it's, uh, it's one of those things where I feel like the more I mess with it, the more I learn from it. But I do see the main limitation for for me is the inability to be able to hands on each part of the song as it's, as it's being laid down, which is a big part of it for me. Well, you did a great job on the remix anyway. Well, I, thank I, you I love very it. Much, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> on the on the subject of preference, yeah. Could we? Could you show us? You know, what you would do with one of these? NBC oh man. Or for people who, are, who haven't even seen one or seen a picture on, you know, eBay oh, or something. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> I had to. You knew they was going to do this shit. All right. Um, what, do, what, do you, what do you want me to do? I mean, basically, it's all ready to go. The turntables. All right, it starts straight. like this. It starts like this. All right, like, like I said, I found that snare, right? So the snare, 
Once I got it. You got it all wired to go in and everything? Yep. Oh, man. You know. <laughs> man, how much time we really got? Seriously. Because I'm time. I got, got to stay on it. Okay. <laughs> all right. Just a little smidge, you know? A little smidge. Yeah. We'll see what we can do real quick. Mm. So basically, the NPCs come back up here. Okay. Yeah. Turntable. It's time to go. Okay. Okay. Through. And that's going there. All right, babe. Hold on. <laughs> Three notes, those are cool. You can fuck with those. track underneath other let it a little pop. But a little sketch like that, you know, you can do a bunch of an hour and come up with some nice ideas. So the way my life is right now, I got all types of responsibilities and stuff. So the what you what you would you what you had can't cannot take for granted is the ability uh, to be able to uh, use your time. And that's that's what I have to pay attention to at this point. Okay. I would love to sit up and I knew he was gonna do this. <laughs> Obsessed with this shit. Um, you, what ends up happening is yeah. you get caught up in it and you keep going, you keep going, you keep adding, and it becomes something in and of itself. If you have any time during your week beyond four hours to work on something creatively, it is a luxury. Don't waste your time. Don't waste it. That's the most important thing I can say to anybody starting to make music or learning to make music or getting better making music or, or trying to is do not waste your time. If you got a, a goofy friend that you love so much but they always need your fucking help over the most minuscule shit, tell them to cut it short, wrap it up. You got songs to make. You, you, you got songs to make because later on, life's gonna start kicking your ass if it hasn't already. And when it starts kicking your ass, you're going to need to be able to deal with crisis management. Crisis management takes time. And chances are, if you've been able to keep making music up to that point in your life, it's going to become important for you to have time. So cut all bullshit. If you play video games, quit wasting time playing fucking video games unless you got stress. If you ain't got no stress, you ain't got no business with no video games. If you don't feel like shooting nobody, you don't need to pretend to be shooting nobody. <laughs> so it's really that's what that's about. So get that out your head. If you got a bad relationship with a goofball boyfriend and he on your nerves and he keeps calling you, stalking you, cut your phone off and go <laughs> sing a song or make something, please. One Write time. a song about the retarded bastard. Do <laughs> you never know. You know, you never know. You know, it's it's really, really. Integrate, integrate your life into what you do. It's that simple. Don't necessarily make a sanitized little place for you to make these, to express your dreams. Integrate as much of your life into your music as possible. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Y'all been great. Let's make it go. I'll take care. Okay, thank you.